Hi there. During this session, I'm going to be talking about atomic spectra, and we can see two examples of and an emission spectra and an absorption spectra just to my side here, and also energy levels. And there's a diagram showing some different levels there. Hopefully, by the end of this session, you're going to be understand exactly what the pictures really show and understand how it has an important relationship to the ideas of quantum mechanics. So let's start off by refreshing our understanding of uh, atomic spectrum. Now, if we look at this diagram from the top. Okay. If we have perfect white light, and this perfect white light is placed through a prism, so creating a continuum spectrum which means that all the colors of the rainbow can be observed clearly. Now that's what the white light is. It is the full spectrum. Now, as it happens, if we have a specific hot gas, hot, so therefore it's emitting radiation, and we put that through a prism to show a spectrum, what we have is an emission line spectrum. So specific lines of light are produced depending on the type of gas. Finally, if I have white light and then that white light is passed through a cold gas, that cold gas absorbs certain specific lines and these are known as the absorption line spectrum. So we can see those dark lines indicate where energy has been absorbed. So those are absorption and emission lines. Uh, so this is a spectrometer. A spectrometer is a device which allows us to actually measure the angle of the different emission or absorption lines. And that can be done because we have a, a source and a slit and light just passes through that one slit and then that can be targeted onto a prism. And then I can rotate that prism around and the eyepiece allows me to um, directly and really accurately measure the amount of uh, bending and therefore it means I can also work out the wavelengths. Um, there are other devices or other spectrometers which use a diffraction grating um, to get similar style of results. So that's how we do things. Let's think about uh, what people did when they first saw emission spectrum. The first person to think about emission spectrum was a guy called Thomas Melville and he studied uh, various gases and he recognized that specific gases gave off specific emission spectra which was useful. Uh, these emission spectra were studied in more detail by a number of people. Um, Balmer was an interesting person. He identified a formula which described the spectrum of hydrogen. However at the time although he had got this formula it was pretty much by uh, guessing and checking, guessing and checking. And there wasn't a clear scientific explanation as to how these values came about or why these lines existed at certain wavelengths. Okay. So now let's think about energy levels. Okay. So uh, energy levels exist. Uh, energy level numbers are called quantum numbers. And what we have here is we have um, the number depending on the energy level inside an atom. We've got a hydrogen energy level diagram here. Uh, the values of the energy levels, as we can see on the right hand side here, these relate to the energy required for an electron to escape. So that means completely free of the uh, atom to be, I guess, ionized. Uh, these are negative and are usually given in electron volts. So it's the amount of energy required to get to, you'll see the example given here is um, energy level infinity. So that's the point when electrons have escaped, that final point. So what happens here is when an electron drops down, it emits uh, energy as an electromagnetic wave. And what it does is this electromagnetic wave is directly related to the change in energy level. So if I go from E2 to E1 and I subtract those two values, 
what it gives me is, is a, a clear amount of energy. Now the energy transfer happens to be related to a quanta of energy which we thought about beforehand. So using Planck's uh, constant multiplied by the frequency, or I can obviously work out uh, the wavelength as required. This shows that this amount of energy, which was being observed earlier on, uh, produces clear quanta, or clear chunks of energy. So now some energy question level questions. Okay, uh, the following table shown at the bottom there gives wavelengths of light when electrons change between energy levels in hydrogen. So transition of n from three to two gives off wavelength of 656.3 nanometers in the color which is red. You're asked to do a series of things: calculate the potential energy of an electron at level n equals two. Then calculate the difference in potential energy uh, between levels n equals 2 and n equals 3. Find out what is the potential energy of an electron at level n equals 3. And then if an electron were to jump from n equals 7 to n equals 5, what would the wavelength of the proton uh, given off be? So there's a series of bit of thinking you need to do here. Remember, if you know the wavelength, you can work out the frequency and therefore work out the energy involved in that transition. So, you had a moment to think about that. Let's look at some answers now. We'll show you all the answers and work us through these. First of all, calculate the potential energy of an electron in uh, level n equals 2. Well, uh, we, we know obviously the speed of light and we know the wavelength uh, and we know that it being light means that we can work out the frequency so the frequency becomes 8.23 times 10 to the minus 14 hertz. Now the change in energy is going to be equal to the frequency times Planck's constant so therefore we can work out this is going to be 5.46 times 10 to the minus 19 joules or more importantly minus 3.41 electron volts. Next we're asked to calculate the difference in potential energies between levels 2 and level 3. So here we'll look at the frequency is going to be uh, the change in energy uh, divided by Planck's constant. Now that frequency is going to be the frequency of light given off when we have that transition between those two objects. So what we do again is we know the wavelength, we know the speed of light, we know Planck's constant, so therefore we should be able to rearrange to work out what the change in energy is. So that gives me 1.89 electron volts. Uh, what is the potential energy at level n equals 3? Well, for n equals 3, if I know what uh, the value is for n equals 2, and I know what the value is from n equals 2 to n equals 3, so therefore if I do uh, minus 3.41 minus 1.89, that gives me minus 5.3 um, electron volts. So that's the potential energy at level n equals 3. Finally, if the electron was to jump from n equals 7 to n equals 5, what would the wavelength for the photons given off be? Again, I've got some data here. What I'm thinking about is I know the difference from 5 to 2 and I know from 7 to 2. So what I would do is I've got to uh, make a comparison here. And by making that comparison and recognizing that there's going to be a change, um, I come out with a final wavelength of 4.65. Uh, micrometers. Uh, the electron in a box model brings together the idea about electron energy levels and de Broglie's wavelength. If it assumes that de Broglie's wavelengths associated with electrons will be standing waves, that means that uh, we'll have uh, 
n equals 1 is related to the first harmonic of a standing wave and so on and so forth. That means that if I use de Broglie's equation and the equation relating to the standing waves found uh, which are held at either end therefore I can work out that the wavelength or the momentum is going to equal to the energy level multiplied by Planck's constant divided by twice the uh, length of the wave as a whole. So, relating this to kinetic energy, I know that kinetic energy equals momentum squared divided by 2m, substituting for uh, momentum, I end up getting a value which tells me that in the end uh, the kinetic energy of an electron in an atom at a certain energy level should be eight n squared times h squared divided by eight ml squared. Hopefully this is giving you insight into atomic spectra.